Hola, I'm Gustavo Ariano, columnist for the Los Angeles Times and host of the podcast, The Times, Essential News from the LA Times. And the three things I'm looking for in the November 8th election, I think the most important one is this threat of political violence, of election monitoring, this fear that the election is not going to go the way that previous elections in the United States has gone. In other words, peaceful, or if you really want to pay attention, uh, apathetic voters. There has been threats with the, uh, you know, the attack on uh, Paul Pelosi, the husband of Nancy Pelosi, with all sorts of nasty rhetoric over the past couple of years, with threats against Congress people, especially at record levels. A lot of people are going to be afraid and also wonder, is my vote going to count? And there's also been a lot of candidates on the Republican Party who have said that Joe Biden stole the 2020 election and that's why they're running to be county commissioner to be governor to be uh council members state senators so the threat of if those people get into office what does that mean for fair elections in the united states in the future a lot of people have that concern on them and they also will that depress the vote or will that increase the vote that's one thing i'm looking for the other thing that i'm looking for what kind of election is it going to be in terms of what's going to bring out voters? Because a lot of people thought that with the overturning of Roe versus Wade this summer by the Supreme Court with the Dobbs decision, that Democrats and also people who support abortion rights, they were going to march out in droves and exact revenge on the Republican Party for allowing this to happen. But that was in the summer. Now here we're in the fall. Inflation is starting to rise again. There's everyone seems to be talking about a recession is inevitable next year. So are voters going to vote on the economy? Are voters going to vote on this idea that things are not particularly safe right now? If that's going to bring them out, then that's going to go for uh, the Republicans. But if people are still angry about uh, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, they're going to go for the Democrats. And the one key vote that's going to swing that way would be younger voters, Generation Z voters. The third thing on a personal level that I'm really interested in seeing is the Latino vote, because you've seen a lot of coverage this summer, this year, about how Latinos are leaving the Democratic Party. And if not turning Republican, at least being independent, but looking to hear what non-liberal perspectives are saying. And nowhere is that more of an example than in the Los Angeles mayoral race. You have Karen Bass, a progressive icon of Congress member, going against Rick Caruso, a billionaire developer who was Republican most of his voting life. And Karen is still expected to win the election. The most latest polls for the Los Angeles Times show that, but it's still very tight. But the one group that could swing the election for Caruso would be Latinos. They overwhelmingly support him. And you're seeing that in Nevada, where Latinos are also seen as a swing vote to keep either keep the Democrats in power or give it to the Republicans. If Latinos go Republican, there is going to be a political earthquake like never seen before. And a lot of it's going to be trashing Latinos. Oh, Latinos, you're so dumb. How dare you go for the Republicans? How dare you vote against your own interests? But to me, that just shows how uh, to this day, how we're stereotyped as having to be one way. Guess what, everyone? Latinos are humans. We could be smart. We could be dumb. But at the end, when it comes to voting, we're not going to be swayed by money. We're going to be swayed by whatever the particular issues are for us. And if Latinos think Republicans are talking to them about issues that matter to them, like the economy, like safety, like education, then only Democrats have themselves to blame for losing Latinos. Anyways, there's a lot of other things for me to think about, but I think my time is up. Go to latimes.com, read everything I say, and watch all the videos that the LA Times has ever produced, ever. And more importantly, vote. I don't know if you see this, but vote. And if you don't see this, still vote.